Hey, this is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're going to work on this click to tweet feature. And uh, basically, what's going to happen is if you select any text on your page, this little button will pop up. And if you click it, that selection will be taken to Twitter. It'll be your input. Then you'll grab that uh, URL that you were on, and you can add whatever hashtags you want to it as well as you compose the tweet. All right, if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit the like button and a comment. Let me know what you think and feel free to subscribe. I try to release several times a week. And uh, if this is a help to you, then it helps to know that. All right, let's jump right in. All right, as normal on our channel, I've already done most of the work on HTML and CSS. We're just gonna focus on JavaScript. HTML is nothing special. Basically, you've got paragraph tags, all right? And for the SAS, uh, we're just using parcel and uh, to kind of live hot reload this over here. Uh, I'll try to remember to add a card and a description so that you can look into Parcel if you haven't done that before, as I've done a video on it in the past. Uh, there's nothing super important. Basically, the only thing that's super <laughs> important, I guess, uh, I lied, was there's a button we're going to create with JavaScript called Twitter button. That'll be the class. And it'll just be a, an A tag, a link tag. And inside that tag will be an SVG. That's that little Twitter icon. The Twitter button will be position absolute. And we're going to use JavaScript to position it on the page wherever we release the uh, cursor uh, or our mouse button. We'll also set the pointer events to none so that it's hidden and pointer events to none. We could also use display none, but I'd rather do this because we can kind of animate this opacity. And then uh, the Twitter button itself, then uh, we'll just show whenever this class of active comes on. Pointer events will go to all, opacity will go to one, and then uh, we'll have this little hover effect. And uh, the last thing here is this Twitter a feather uh, slash Twitter. That's just the icon we're going to use. And I just grabbed that from feathericons.com, which are a bunch of open source icons. And uh, search for Twitter, pulled it up, and then we're going to use the copied code from that. Now we've got it set to pointer events of none so that we can't accidentally, when the button is visible, click on the SVG rather than the button. We only want to click on the button. So that's why I've got it set up that way. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the JavaScript. All right, we're going to do several things here, but the first and probably most important thing is to first create the Twitter button. So we'll say function. We're just going to call this create Twitter button because that's what it is. All right, and then we're going to come in here and say Twitter button. First thing we need to do is we need to create an element on the page. So we'll say document.create element, and we're just going to put an A tag in here. So we've created an A tag. It's not on the page yet. It's just floating somewhere in JavaScript's memory. All right, next we want to add a class to it. So classlist.add, and of course we want to add that Twitter uh, button class, which is what we've used to style everything in the SAS. All right, we're going to add several attributes now on this. First thing, we're going to say Twitter Twitter button dot set attribute. And we want it to where when they click, you might, you probably know how to do this. You set up target of blank. In other words, it'll open in a new tab. Let's copy this down a couple more times. We want, we want to add at least two other attributes here. First of all, we want to make sure that for SEO purposes, we have rel set to no follow and no opener. This will ensure that Google and other search engines don't follow the link as if it's part of your site and uh, impart your own SEO value to it. All right, and next let's add an ARIA label just for accessibility. And we'll just describe what this button does share on Twitter. All right, so we've got the A tag kind of ready to go. The next thing we need to do is actually add that SVG in the middle of it. Enter.html, and we're gonna set that to this SVG I've grabbed from, again, feathericons.com. Lastly, let's go ahead and drop it onto the body. So we're gonna say body.append child, and we're gonna append the Twitter button. Now. We haven't actually run it yet. We just have this function. So let's come down here and say create Twitter button. And now if I come down here, it should be somewhere on the page. Let's see, I forgot we've got it set to opacity of zero. Let's remove that. Yeah, there it is. All right, so uh, we're gonna use JavaScript to toggle this on with this class of active, if you remember. All right, now what we wanna do is we, we wanna write an event listener that's gonna listen for the mouse coming up when they click and they release. So we'll say document, we're going to do it on the entire document, dot add event listener. And the event we're listening for again is mouse up. And we're going to grab the E or the event. Let's go ahead and we're going to console log the window dot get selection. 
And this is uh, a method that lives on the window itself. We could also do document, I guess. It's the same thing. Um, I guess since we're doing document here, we'll just do document there. And what it does is when you select anything or click anything, it's actually going to give you this kind of selection area. Now I started up here in the H2 and ended on the P tag, and I'll show you kind of how we're going to use that. Let me pull this up here and then zoom in a bit. Maybe not that much. Now in Chrome, it's a little confusing. They've got four different nodes that pull up here. Best as I can tell, anchor node and focus node are in every browser. These base nodes and extent nodes are not, and they're kind of like clones of these other ones. I don't know if they had trouble naming them, um, but basically use the anchor node and the focus node and forget these things. All right, so we come in here and it's going to give us a bunch of things. It'll give us uh, the text that we selected, um, but this anchor node, this first one actually tells us where the selection started. And if you might remember, we started on an H2 and that's exactly what we're told here. The parent element of the start point for our selection was H2. The focus node then tells us where we ended and then we ended the selection on a paragraph tag. We only want to use paragraph tags in the selection to send things to Twitter. So we can use that to our advantage. Let me pull this back down here. We can use that to our advantage by saying dot anchor nodes. So we're going to look at the first part of the selection where you started the selection dot parent element dot tag name. So the tag name of the parent element is equal to, and you might remember it was capitalized, so we'll say P. All right, so this is going to tell us true or false. The start of our selection was a paragraph. So if I come here and select, we should get true. If I start in the H2, it should get false. Now we're going to use this as a check to double check that whatever we've selected has either a starting point or an ending point in a paragraph. You could probably get more restrictive if you want, but I mean, I'm not that concerned about somebody copying my H2. So I'll come in here and say uh, document.getSelection. So if it's equal to this, or we'd want to grab not the anchor node now, but the focus node, which is the end point for that selection. If either of them are equal to P, we're just going to uh, return console log, uh, yeah, paragraphed. That should totally be a verb, all right? Otherwise, well, console log, you didn't paragraph. Oh, I can't do that. Paragraph, there we go. Okay, so if I come in here, this should say you paragraphed. This should say you paragraphed because I ended on a paragraph. But if I come up here and tap the header, I didn't paragraph. All right, if I just select an H2, I did not paragraph. So we've got it doing what we want it to do. Now we want to do something useful with it. So let's come down here. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to get the actual selection itself. So we'll say const selection, and this time we'll we're going to say document.getSelection. And instead of figuring out what anchor node and all that stuff, we don't care about that anymore because we know we're only dealing with things that have a paragraph tag either at the start or the end of the selection. So we're just going to say to string, another method here that lives on the document. And if we were to console log this, then as we select things, it's going to give us the text and no more than the text. You see it starts with OR here and it ends with A down here. So it's giving us the exact selection that we've grabbed. There's probably another check we want to run up here real quick um, because sometimes you can actually select the body itself. And if you select the body, which I can't seem to do right now, but it will actually give you an error. So if I come in here, let's just say this. If um, the document.getSelection.anchorNode.parent element. All right. And by putting this bang on the front, we've said if it does not have a parent element. So if it's the body, basically. If that's the case, we can just say, uh, return. So we've done a check up there and now it's time to do one final check down here because even if you select a paragraph, it may be that you just clicked a paragraph and there's no actual uh, details you're copying over. So we don't need to copy over blank text and tweet that, although sometimes I wonder if that wouldn't help Twitter, but uh, this is not a social commentary. So the first thing we're going to do is say selection uh, dot length. Let's come in here and console log this actually and say, let's see what the selection.length is. So I click in this paragraph, and I should actually get zero. I click up in this H2, I shouldn't get anything because it's not a paragraph tag. But if I come in here and select, it'll give me the characters, 218 characters. Now you could run some kind of check where if it's more than 250, you throw up an error and say, hey, that's too long, or you don't show the tweet option, but I figured it'll take it over to Twitter and they can figure out what they want to do with it at that point.
And we're going to use a little hack here. And it's, I guess, I don't know if this is technically a turn area or not, but we're going to want to check if it's above zero. In other words, if there's anything in the selection. And then normally for a turn area, you have to do a question mark and something true and a colon something false. All right, well, we don't care. The only thing we care about is if it's true. So what we can do here is we can say, we can use this trick called and, and. Now, not everyone likes this, and um, you'll see what I mean by the fact that it's a little hack. We're going to say tweet uh, text, first of all, and we want to send the E and the selection, the event itself, that mouse event and the selection. So what we're doing here is we're using this and and trick that usually says hey both these things have to be true and then do something um, and we're kind of using it as part of this ternary kind of concept the shorter if statement if this is ever false it'll never ever go to this section if it's true it will and that's kind of all we care about so it's basically a little if statement without all the jargon so we wrote this function called tweet text and let's go ahead and grab it up here so tweet text and remember it takes in an e and a selection and right now we'll just console log the E and the selection. So if I come over here and I select something, I get both the mouse event and I guess whatever I selected. Oh, yeah, and it's giving me that selection down there too. So I get the mouse event and I get the selection. And the first thing we need to do is grab our actual Twitter button. Now, because we're going to use it in one other function, I'm going to go ahead and just grab it up here. So we'll say const Twitter button document dot query selector dot Twitter button. Now what we want to do is grab that a tag down here on the tweet text and update its link, its href. So we'll say Twitter button dot href. If you search around on Twitter or click other links, you'll notice that if you just add twitter.com slash intent tweet with a question mark, you can then add whatever you want in the URL and it'll actually pre-populate Twitter so long as somebody's logged in. So we can come in here and say, add hashtags like copied, or you can add multiple ones like pizza, or um, you've been selected, whatever. All right, so you can add your own, and then you add an ampersand URL, and then we wanna grab a URL. We're gonna write, I right, grab that from the window here, and then we're gonna add our selection as the text itself. And by using backticks here, we can grab these uh, E6 template strings and add them directly in here. We do need that URL, so we're going to say const URL is equal to, and then what we're going to do is just say location.href. So what we're doing is grabbing the actual link from the window, the, the actual URL. So now when somebody clicks on your A link, your button, your Twitter button, it will actually open this link. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and write classless.add active. And now let's see if that works. So when we come down here, now it's still down this direction. As we select, it should pull up, which is perfect. That's what we want. All right, now it's just going to permanently live on the page. So we're going to have to take care of that too. But the next thing we'll do is we're going to say Twitter button dot style dot top is equal to E, that's the event, dot page Y. That's the vertical up and down space on the page where you've released your mouse. And then we need to add plus uh, pixels to make sure that it actually is in pixels. And then for the left, so we're going to set the top and the left. We're just going to set this to the X position on the page. So now when we come in here, we should be able to select, and it should pop up wherever we, we have, essentially wherever we released our mouse uh, button. Now if we do it this way, you'll notice it just permanently lives on the page, which can be kind of annoying. And if they click, it's not going away. How do I get rid of this button? All right, so let's do a few things. First of all, let's say whenever they first click, even if they're not clicking text, we don't care if it's paragraph or not, we're going to say Twitter button dot class list dot remove active. So get rid of the Twitter button. So if I come in here and select it first, it shows up. If I click anywhere, it's going to remove itself. But I also want it to where it kind of fades off the screen after a few seconds. I mean, if they haven't tweeted after five seconds, your quote that you've got on your page, they're probably not going to tweet it um, 20 seconds from now. So let's find a way to remove that. Let's come back up to our query selectors, and we're going to say, uh, let Twitter button timer. So we're just going to establish this variable and not set it to anything yet. But we're going to use this timer to set a timeout on the actual button showing and removing itself. We're going to come down here and grab that same functionality here. And we're going to say Twitter timer is now equal to set timeout, which is a way to set a timer basically on the page. 
and then you write both a function, and this function will literally just say Twitter button dot class list dot remove active. In fact, maybe we'll, let's do this. Let's have a function called hide Twitter button, and it's as simple as that. And then we can use this hide Twitter button uh, in here, and we can use the hide Twitter button here. All right, so you give it, first of all, a function, and then you pass it a number of milliseconds. Let's do like 4,000, something like that. So it should disappear after 4,000 milliseconds or four seconds. So now if I come in here, I select, all right, we did something wrong. And I think we actually need to call this rather than write it directly in here. All right, let's try again. Come over here, it shows after four seconds, it gets off the screen. Okay, we did it right, <laughs> okay. Uh, the last thing we need to worry about then is we want to actually clear that timeout each time we select text. So as we come in here, we're right now it's not actually clearing the timeout. And so after a while, you'll notice it just starts fading away right away because these all those timers are running from all the previous selections. So once we know it's a paragraph, once we know we're going to send it to the tweet text function, we can actually clear that timeout. So we'll say clear timeout. The timeout we want to clear is the Twitter button timer. All right, and if we did everything correctly, now it should work. You come in here and it shows for a few seconds. If you select again, it shows and it restarts that timer so it's not gonna zap out on you early. If you click anywhere on the page, it disappears. If you try to grab a header and uh, an H2 or a section tag or something like that, the Twitter button will not show. And now if we click, we should send this thing to Twitter. All right, perfect, and I've just zoomed in so much, and you can see all those random hashtags that we added, the URL that we added, and um, all pre-populated, ready for them to click tweet. All right, hopefully that was a fun project for you. Uh, I enjoyed figuring out kind of how to make it all work, and uh, this has got some functionality. Again, if you wanted to add little Twitter buttons next to all your quotes on your page or something like that so people could click them and just tweet, uh, uh, tweet that quote, maybe you don't want people selecting random text on your page, and I get that. The other thing you could do is if you're like, I don't really have a need to tweet, I'm not that into Twitter, what you could do is use the last, one of the last videos I did about uh, copying something to your user's clipboard and, and changing out that icon for a clipboard icon. And then when they select and they click it, instead of doing all this stuff with Twitter, you could actually just copy it to their clipboard. And so that's another functionality for this kind of selection. If you like this kind of thing, please hit like and subscribe and let me know what else you'd like me to do in the comments. Uh, until next time, though, happy coding.